Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Tristan Barracks here, the digital storyteller, and I'm super excited to be with you once again for another episode of Seneca, where we'll be talking about how to get silky smooth, buttery smooth, slow-mo footage from the A7 Mark IV. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Woo! So why would you want to shoot in slow motion or in 60 frames a second? I think there are a lot of reasons why people may want to shoot in slow motion. For me, I think that slow motion is best used sparingly for specific reasons, like very emotional moments or really high energy moments, maybe at a concert, at a at a wedding or a bar mitzvah, during moments where, where there's so much emotion and so much passion and so many things happening that you wanna capture it in a high frame rate and be able to play it back slowly so that you can really take all of the, take in all the nuances of what's happening in that moment. And I think as viewers, we appreciate when slow motion is used well and not just used just because it's slow motion. Now, the way I like to separate it is by separating by the S and Q mode versus the manual mode, the fully manual mode. Now, Either one can be used perfectly fine to shoot great slow motion, but there might be reasons to choose one or the other, and we'll talk about each right now. Now, the reason why somebody might use the SQ mode is really, really simple because everything is already preset and predetermined, meaning once you set your SQ modes in your menu, menu settings, all you have to do is flip a switch to the SQ mode and you can start shooting in slow mo. It'll already be a slow motion clip when you bring it into those editors, so you won't have to be doing the math of, you know, how long or how much of a percentage do I have to slow down the clip in order to get smooth, buttery, buttery slow motion. Now, fully manual mode is my favorite mode, but it requires you to have a lot more knowledge and do a little bit more math. And why, why I say that is because when you are in fully manual mode, you have to pick the right frame rate. So if you wanna shoot in 30 frames per second or in 60 frames per second, you have to pick that before you start filming. And then from there, you also have to make sure your shutter speed is at the correct uh, settings in order for you to have you know, smooth playback. Then once you film that clip, you have to bring the clip into your editor, Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, or DaVinci Resolve, and you have to do the math in order to make sure that the clip is being slowed, slowed down at the correct speed. So you can see both of these settings speak to very different needs of filmmakers shooting you know, documentaries or live events, etc., etc. <laughs> All right, let's jump into our menu options and I'll show you how to set up your s and mode so you can shoot buttery smooth uh, 60 frames per second slow-mo. All right, so we're gonna jump into the shooting options. We're gonna go under image quality and we're gonna go down to the s and settings. Now, the first option is our record frame rate. Now, when we're talking about the recording frame rate, what we're, what we're actually saying is that what is the deliverable or the, the actual settings of the clip? So when the clip is going to be created, what container is it going to be created in? Is it going to be 24 frames a second, 30 frames or 60? Now, in this case, I only have two options. I have 60 or 24 frames. I want to be delivering. I'm going to be delivering my project in 24 frames per second. So I'm going to click on that. Okay. What that means is that when the clip is being saved onto the card, um, the a7 IV is going to save all of these settings as if it's shooting in 24 frames per second. Now, the next option under S and Q mode is the frame rate, the frame rate uh, option. Now the frame rate is actually speaking to how many frames per second we're actually going to record in. Remember now, don't get this confused with the record frame rate. The record frame rate is almost like when you open up a project, a project within your library in Final Cut Pro or in DaVinci Resolve, 
and it asks you what kind of frame rate you want this timeline to be or this project to be, that's what the record frame rate is. It's almost like your project setting. So what you're telling the A7 Mark IV is that I'm recording and delivering in 24 frames per second. The, the actual shooting frame rate, what I'm going to be shooting in is either 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second, or 15, eight, four, or two. Now, just a, just a little bit of a tip. If you wanna do like a cool time-lapse type of event, effect, what you can do is you can use the one to uh, 15 second time-lapse um, option. And that actually gives you like almost like a hyperlapse type of a mode. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, of your menu screen, it actually will say times 1.25 slow motion. What that means is that the playback of this clip will be one and a quarter times slower playback in slow motion. And that's what, what we're gonna get essentially as a finished product or as a final uh, video clip that's going to be delivered to us and saved on our, our memory card. Now that's in 30 frames per second. Now, if we go to 60 frames per second or FPS, now if we look at the bottom, it actually says times 2.5 slow motion. So it's saying that it's two and a half times slower or delivering a two and a half times slow clip in 24 frames per second. So we're gonna get that 60 frames per second. Now, if we go down to the last option where it says record settings, the record settings is really the, the quality, the, the, um, the color space quality uh, that's going to be recorded. So we can record in 100 megabits per second, 422, 10 bit. So that's up to us in terms of what we wanna pick. I'm gonna pick the highest quality because I like the highest quality. I'm gonna hit uh, the, that this option here is going to say confirm what my options are and we're pretty much good to go. The only thing that we're going to need to do is when we go out of our settings, so I'm just, I just hit the shutter button there. What we're going to do is we have to now make sure that our shutter is reflective of what we're recording. Now, if we are recording um, 60 frames per second and we want that ultra slow-mo, we want to make sure that our shutter speed is double whatever 60 frames per second is. So what's 60 times two? Hello, somebody. It's 120, right? So we should be at 120 or the closest number to 120. So if I go to my shutter button or my shutter dial, right? The closest I can get to 120 is not 100, but it is 125. Now this is important because this is going to allow us to have ultra slow motion uh, when it comes to the 60 frames per second. If you don't, if you have it at you know 80, 80 shutter speed or 100 shutter speed or 60 shutter speed, then you're not going to be able to have buttery smooth uh, slow motion. It's just not going to work out. If you have it higher than that, it may start looking staccato-ish. So keep that in mind as well. It's not going to make it more smoother the higher the shutter frame is. It'll actually make it a little bit more, uh, not choppier, but more high energy. So you just want to keep it to the, the closest thing, which is 125th. You want to be on S and Q mode. Make sure that you're on S and Q mode. On S and Q mode, it will show you automatically what you have, which is you're shooting 4K, 24 frames per second. That's sort of the settings of the clip. You're, the camera is going to be capturing 60 frames per second so it can produce a slow motion clip for you. Now there is one more thing that you gotta keep in mind. When you are shooting in 60 frames per second, it is going to crop in a bit. So that's something that's going to happen. It crops into super 35 mode. Um, some people don't like that, some people do. It doesn't bother me at all. And, and that's really it in terms of the S and Q mode. Once you have those sort of settings baked in, then you can change your ISO or you can change um, you know, your F-stop to suit your settings, your lighting settings, but you wanna keep your shutter speed um, double the, the frame rate that you, you're capturing, and then you should be good to go. Now that we're done with S and Q mode, let's go and do this in manual settings and create our slow motion options. The first thing that you wanna do is you wanna switch the dial from S and Q mode or from photography mode to film mode. Make sure you switch that, that's really, really important. Then what you wanna do is you wanna hit the menu button. Under the menu button, we wanna to go to the uh, shooting options or the shooting tab. We wanna to go to image quality. Under image quality, we wanna to go to file format. Again, 
This gives us all of the different file formats, our HD file formats, as well as our 4K file formats. I'm not gonna go through all of the settings again in terms of the different quality and the different codecs and whatever else. I'm just gonna go with the XAVC H S 4K mode because I feel like that's really great quality and it saves on space. So we're gonna confirm that. Then we're gonna go down to our movie settings. Now under movie settings now we have to, the difference here is now we have to change our frame rate from, from 24 frames per second to 60 frames per second. So we're gonna hit on 60 frames per second. And now that we have 60 frames per second, the only other option that we need to change is our recording settings. So when we go into record settings, we have uh, a number of different quality uh, settings. I'm gonna go under 200 megabits. So if you notice in the S and Q mode, you actually lose a little bit of quality because you can only top off uh, in terms of your quality at 100 megabits per second, whereas on the fully manual mode, you can actually top off at 200 megabits per second, which is which is double the quality that you can get out of the S&Q mode. Now, what you get for in convenience in the S&Q mode, you lose out on quality. That's just something to keep in mind. So now that we have all of our settings done under the uh, shooting image quality, uh, all we have to do is press the shutter button and then we're going to make sure that we confirm that we have the right shutter speed. So we wanna make sure again, our shutter speed is one over 125th. That's gonna give us our buttery smooth um, double uh, shutter speed uh, of our frame rate. And then from there, we wanna confirm that we still have 60 frames per second. We have 10 bit, we're shooting a 10 bit um, and we can change our ISO, we can change our F-stop uh, based on our lighting uh, situations and our settings. Now let's jump into Final Cut Pro and I'll show you how to slow down your manual clips so that they are buttery smooth and they play back exactly how you want them to. So I'm in Final Cut Pro right now. I have brought in a couple of clips that I shot a few days ago uh, with um, my friend Rhonda, who's a model. I shot all of these in uh, 60 frames per second uh, manually in manual mode. So if I play back any of these clips, it's going to automatically play back in 60 frames per second. So if we hit on that, it's automatically playing back as 60 frames per second. Same thing here, 60 frames per second. Um, and then I shot some vertical as well because I wanted to get some cool vertical shots here. This is all handheld with the A7 Mark IV. As you can see, it's a little shaky, but once we slow it down, you'll see how usable a lot of these clips are. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, start out with the normal um, 60 by nine clips. So I'm gonna go up to file, go to new project. When I open up a new project, I'm just gonna call this uh, test 60 slow, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change it and make sure that it's under, uh, I'll do, 4K because we're shooting 4K. And I'm going to make sure that the resolution is good, which is uh, 3840 by 2160. And then I want to make sure my frame rate, this is really important. My frame rate needs to be 23.98 uh, or 24 frames per second to get the ultra slow mo, especially if I shot in uh, over cranks in uh, 60 frames per second or shot in 60 frames per second. And then uh, if I want to, I can also do it just 50% slow. And if I'm delivering in 30 frames per second, then I can pick either 29.97 or 30 frames per second. Uh, if you're in the UK, then you would you would be picking uh, 25p if you shot 50p, so, uh, so on and so forth. Anyways, so now that we have that, we have that project opened up. What we're gonna do next is we are going to take a clip. So I'm gonna just take this clip of Rhonda. I'm gonna drag it in. I don't need the audio right now, so I'm just gonna take down my audio here. I'm gonna hold Shift Z, and I'm just going to see my whole clip here. So now that I have my clip here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go uh, to this middle bar here. This is kind of where my tools are. And I'm gonna go right to this option right here. This is. Uh, called the uh, clip retiming option button. I'm gonna click on that. 
And when, it, when I click on it, it's gonna open up a few different options for me. I can go slow and I can go 50% slow, 25% slow, 10% slow, or I can speed up the clip. Um, I can go to normal, I can hold it, so it's gonna give me like a freeze frame. Um, I can do uh, blade speed, so that allows me to kind of make variations, so ramping up and slowing down uh, variations within the clip. I don't wanna do any of those things. All I wanna do is I wanna go down to automatic speed, meaning Final Cut will analyze the clip, and then based on the clip frame rate and the project timeline settings, which are in 24 frames, it will then calculate how slow this clip can actually be reduced to. So I'm gonna click on automatic speed. And now by default, it's automatically turned this clip to 40% out of a potential 100%, right? So 100% would be 60 frames a second, 40% would be two times, two and a half times slower. Um, and that's going to give us our slow motion. And, and that's showing us that here. Now I'm gonna press the playback and you guys can see what it looks like here. And as you can see, it's super slow, super creamy, crispy, great, beautiful, love it. Now you might be thinking, okay, well now how do I like, this is like I, I shot this in picture profile number seven. So it's a little flat. What I can do is, or what I'd like to do is, I'm just gonna go up to my inspector window and click on the color corrections area. And I'm just gonna do a rough sort of like adjustment. So I'm gonna kind of crush my blacks a bit, bring up my whites a little bit, and then bring in my saturation a bit. So that's, that's a good start. Then I'm gonna go to my filters and add in a LUT. It's gonna drag the LUT on here. And by default, once I added the LUT, I'm gonna to go to my film or my video option tab. I'm just gonna hit on one of my uh, pre-made LUTs. I'm just going to adjust it as needed, get it to where I want it to be. And now I have my beautiful model with a little LUT added to it and I can make some other adjustments to it if I want to but it's all in slow motion all good to go so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more clips so I'm actually going to just close these off I'm just gonna add a couple more outdoor clips okay I'm just gonna drag them right into the timeline and instead of doing each one of those settings over and over and over again I'm just gonna select my first clip I'm gonna hold command and press C on my keyboard, Command C. So that's copy paste. I'm going to drag, I'll, I'll make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. If I press and hold on the background and drag over the clips, this now highlights all the clips here. Then, then if I press Command Option V, what it's gonna do is it's gonna paste all of those settings that I have on my first clip on the other clips. So I'm gonna hold Command, option and then press a V and there you go all of the clips have the LUTs have the settings the slow motion settings on them everything's looking pretty good love how this is turning out beautiful perfect quality is really really good the main thing that you want to remember when you are using uh, a manual clip or a clip that was shot in 60 frames a second you don't want to create a project that's 60 frames per second. You wanna create a project that's 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, which is less frames. That will give you the space or the latitude to then elongate or slow down the clip, which will allow it to be slow motion. But if you have a 60 frame clip that's going into a 60 frame timeline or project, then you, you have no room to slow down the clip. So that's the most important thing to remember. And that's it folks. That's how you create buttery smooth slow motion, either in manual mode or in S and Q mode using the A7 Mark IV. I hope this video was a great tutorial for you, a great help for you. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts, comment below, ask questions below, share this video, like it, and subscribe to the channel. Until the next time, stay blessed, stay focused, and stay creative. Peace.